uh, the president of Burlington BPW, and she will tell us a, a, tell you a little bit about our organization. So, Sue Sorensen. Thank you. I'd like to welcome all of you this evening to our candidates forum. Um, as Diane said, I am the president of Business and Professional Women, and the Business and Professional Women of Burlington um, promote charitable, educational, and scientific purposes. We establish, maintain, and distribute scholarships to students in the area. We give financial aid to schools, colleges, and other institutions of education. We conduct research and surveys, and we provide lectures and seminars. Um, in essence, we do what needs to be done to make sure the business and professional women of Burlington, Iowa get what they need and what they deserve. Um, tonight, just as a reminder, um, this forum can be viewed on the City Cable Channel 18 and is streamed live also and heard on radio. Oh, it's heard on radio. <laughs> anyway, um, let's let the games begin. All right, thank you. Okay, momentarily I've lost my glasses, so and in the meantime, I will try to read this. But, first of all, um, you may call in 319-753-8136 and someone will take your questions. Uh, this will be replayed later on uh, the radio station, check online there. And at this point, we're going to ask the candidates to introduce themselves. Um, initially, I will say, uh, that David Cloak is unable to be here this evening. He is ill, and so um, hopefully he'll show up at one of the, you'll be able to hear him at one of the other forums, okay? Um, we're going in alphabetical order. It was the only way I could make some organization out of this, and um, so we'll begin Let's with John Billups. All right. Let's see you. Well, my name's John Billups, and I'm running for city council. Uh, I'm married to my wife, Mitty. She's in the audience. She's my better half. I have three grown sons and two dogs. I started my work career in, in Burlington at the age of 13 for Billups Tire. Uh, served there until my, it, that business closed after my father's passing. Then I went to work for the Hawkeye, and now I am currently the general manager of Bluff Harbor Marina and an account exec for Pritchard Broadcasting. I decided to run because I come from a long family tradition of community service. Both my father and I have served on various boards and, and committees throughout the city. And uh, on my wife's side, Thomas J. Smith uh, is the longest serving mayor of Burlington and these chambers are named after him. It's my wife's great grandfather. So I decided I'd follow their footsteps but try to blaze my own path. Thank you, John. Uh, Scott Deal. Oh, great. Um, I want to knock your sign down, John. Um, I'm Scott Deal. Of course, I'm running for Burlington City Council. Uh, this is my first attempt at this. I've been involved in politics since I was 14, but behind the scenes, um, I've always viewed politics as something to help people. I know the word politician nowadays has a negative connotation. I wish it didn't, um, but this is where tonight and hopefully other forums as well as interviews and whatnot as well as you know door knocking which is what I've been doing since February um, this is where we'll find out where the people stand um, and I am only here to try to represent the voice of the majority voice of the people and like I said, I've started back in January. I was the first person to announce his candidacy because I saw a need that hasn't been done in a long time. Um, people are starving out there to hear a voice that's willing to step up and fight for them. And this city is a time, is, is a city to fight for. Thank you very much for- Thank you. Uh, Bill L. Thank you, Diane. And thanks to the uh, Burlington Professional Women's Organization. My name is Bill L. And uh, I uh, had previously served as uh, Mayor Pro Tem and Mayor. And so I thought my uh, experience may have some value nowadays. 
Um, there's going to be some tough decisions in the future coming up that I'd like to be part of to, to help make those. Some of the things, so that I, I, I found out in the process was there's a lot of really neat things happening in Burling right now. <laughs> One of the things is that uh, we're, we're able to, we're, we're finally in a position, I guess, to begin to add some people back to the PD, add people to the fire department. Uh, how we pay for those is still in question uh, uh, to a large degree. But th those are important to me. Um, there's other things that are happening. I, I think I talked to Mr. Fano the other day, and the self-imposed uh, um, uh, amount of dollars that they wanted in their reserves accounts was, was uh, uh, set at 15% of the budget. And I think with this 140000 that are going to save now, they should nearly reach that. So we're looking very good. So I'm, I'm enthused about that as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Michael Elmer. I'm Michael Elmer. I grew up in Burlington. Uh, I did leave the city for 40 years and lived in Savannah 12 years, Atlanta 28 years. Moved back here a little over two years ago. I'm running for city council uh, because I've seen a, a change in this town. It's crime, um, it's taxes. Uh, there's things here that need to be fixed. And I have been involved in my own neighborhood and deeply involved in the city itself. This seemed like the natural next step for me. Uh, I've run a business for many years, so I know what it's like to be fiscally responsible. And if we have money, we can spend it. If we don't, we have to find a way to cut back. And we have to prioritize what's really important to the people of Burlington. Um, there are a lot of elderly people here on fixed income. They can't afford property tax increases, that type of thing. So we've got to watch out for everybody. Um, we've got people here <coughs> with a combined income of under 40000 a year. It's hard to support a family with that kind of money, so we need to get some new business here as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Bob Fleming. Hey, my name is Bob Fleming, happily married to my wife, Anita. Got three sons, two daughters eight grandkids and five great-grandkids, which I'm kind of proud of all of that. I was born and raised in Burlington. I worked at the Weingar Company for 40 years. I think that experience in business taught me a lot of things about how you handle money, how you handle people, and how you make decisions. I've been on the city council for a few years now, and I've really enjoyed it. Under the council manager form of government, I think the key is to have a strong city manager, and we have one. And I think if we let him do his job, we as council people can do a good job of making Burlington better. Thank you. Thank you. Cody Fleetner. Hello, my name is Cody Fleetner. I am 34 years old. I was born and raised here in Burlington, Iowa. I am married seven years to my beautiful husband, Greg Fleetner. We both own and operate Big River Popcorn on Jefferson. You got to go down there. Great caramel corn. Had to do a shameless plug there. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do work at Brad Dairy Honda in West Burlington. Been there about three years. Uh, reason for my running in the city council, uh, it was more so the voice of the people out there. They trust me. I, I've been networked with a lot of people in town because I've been in sales for almost 15 years. Um, I'm approachable. I feel I can talk with people and not at people and hear their voices loud and clear of what's great in Burlington and what we can fix in Burlington as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Paul Goffner. Normally goes by Richard. Yes. Yes. Please. <laughs> <laughs> That's another story, he said. Uh, Good evening, everyone. Uh, I was born and raised on the, the Rathbun Dam. With those of people who've been to Appanoose County, where Centerville's the county seat, you know the Rathbun Lake is there. And uh, if you've ever been there at Buck Creek Marina, and you look west, while well, on top of the hill was where our one-room school was that I went to, and our farmstead was about 100 yards north of there. So. Uh, I uh, was raised by my grandparents, and uh, when the uh, federal government decided they would confiscate our land and throw us off, I, he decided to retire, so I had to get a job. So I started working as a printer's devil at the local uh, weekly newspaper, melding lead for the line of type on the weekends and uh, throwing down the handset type. And uh, I ended up, uh, long story short, uh, owning the uh, New Era newspaper printing, commercial printing, and 
direct mail plant up at Minneapolis. I've lived in Burlington 25 years, been married to my wife for 64 years, and uh, I've run out of honeydew jobs is my reason for running. <laughs> I'm sick and tired of sitting in the basement watching television, <laughs> so I have lots of time, my, um, uh, uh, plenty of time to do all the work that uh, we have to do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jeremy Hollenbeck. Hello, I'm Jeremy Hollenbeck. I'm 29 years old and I'm a teacher for Head Start. Uh, I decided to run for city council to try and make better use. We have, we have pretty good after school programs, but I'd like to see more people get involved, uh, more, more of the community get involved, and i like to try to help the, the lower income to try to raise them out of poverty. Thank you. Kathy John. Hello, my name is Kathy John. I was born and raised in Burlington. I went to BHS, I graduated in 72. I went to SCC, graduated with an associate. I went to Iowa Wesleyan and have a Bachelor's of Arts. I have three children, I have nine grandchildren. I worked at Bolin and Roosevelt Lanes for about 25 years. People from, may know me from there, or they may know me from the Bees. I worked 19 summers for the Burlington Bees. I worked at Great River for 10 years. I now work at Lowe's full-time. I'm part-time at Domino's and part-time at Shopco. I'm running for the people, and I ask the people when they sign my, um, to run, to I, for the working class, class people. Most of the people in Burlington work for a living, <coughs> and I'm working, I want to show that people work and live in Burlington for a reason. Um, the simple reason that I decided to run was because they gave the mayor the money for the race. It's that simple. I'm not fancy, hmm. and I just run. I'm just working. Hopefully everybody will know that. Thank you. Linda Murray. Good <laughs> evening, Diane, and members of the listening audience and those of you out there in TV land. I am married to Matthew Murray, and I have two sons. Uh, they're 14 and 16 years old, and I'm a, a proud mama bear. I think they're pretty gifted a academically and uh, athletically. I am spent most of my career working in a, a service type of position. Most of you may have known me as a registered dietitian. I work right now at Milestones Area Agency on Aging, a history of working with hy V as a dietitian there for six and a half years. Also worked with WIC, so I know firsthand uh, how <coughs> poverty and food insecurity can, can affect a family and a community. I feel that uh, I want to promote the positive image of Burlington. That's one of the reasons I'm running. Uh, when people move here, let's not ask, why Burlington? I want to hear, why not Burlington? So I'm excited to run for this position. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Um, Chance Oliver. Hi, my name's Chance Oliver. I'm 26 years old. I am a Danville native, uh, but I've been living in Burlington for about a year and a half now. Uh, I've worked my entire working career in Burlington. Uh, and in that time living in Burlington and working here, I've met a lot of great people and had a lot of great experiences. Um, but I know from my own experiences and from the experiences of others that there's a lot of improvements that can be made in Burlington. I think it's a wonderful city, uh, and I'd like to try and make it an even more wonderful city for everybody who lives here and anybody who would like to li live, live here in the future. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Matthew Rinker. Uh, yes, my name is Matthew Rinker. Uh, I'm uh, born and raised in Burlington, Iowa. Lived in the same house until the day I left uh, for the United States military after high school. Uh, I spent five years in the military where I met my wonderful wife um, and came home. Uh, graduated from Southeastern Community College and Western Illinois University. Uh, I'm a small business owner here locally. Uh, I operate a, uh, an insurance firm um, and have uh, a multitude of real estate properties as well. Um, the reason I'm running for the city council is I'm concerned with the direction that our community is heading. Um, I'm also concerned with some of the uh, previous council's decisions with regard to growth. Um, and I know that our community has got a lot of decisions to make uh, within the next five to 10 years um, uh, in order to make sure that we are able to uh, operate and function as a community in the long term. So that's why I'm running. Thank you. Um, Ryan Rogers. Hi, I'm Ryan Rogers, and I'm running to be an average voice uh, on for the average citizen in city council. 
Um, the main reason why I'm running is that I found about a year and a half ago um, a statistic about Burlington that's really shocking. Uh, 2014 United Way Alice, you can look this up on Google, 20% of our population was living in poverty and a further 24% was considered working poor. So fully 44% of our population are struggling to make ends meet. I want to use the power of our city to try to be an active voice for betterment in our citizens' lives to help get people to have more money in their pocketbooks. Um, I don't want to raise taxes to do that, but I want to do creative ways um, to do that for our citizens. Um, and that's really my main focus, and um, thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, Jeffrey Stivers. Hi, my name is Jeffrey Stivers. Um, I'm originally from Okwaka. Um, I've lived in Burlington for about uh, 30 years. I'm married, have three boys. Um, used to own a cab company for about 20 years. Now I'm currently the sales uh, customer service manager at Aaron Sales and Lease. And uh, the main reason I wanted to uh, run for city council is I want to, I'm from a small town and I want to get Burlington back to the state where you can be proud to live here. You don't want to wake up in the morning and hear of another shooting or somebody being robbed. Um, I've actually had this experience happen personally. There was a shooting right outside my kitchen window. So I just want to get Burlington back to being a safe place to live. Thank you. And that ends our introductory portion of the um, uh, forum. At this time, we're going to turn it over to um, Rob Sussman and Tanner Cole. 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 We want <laughs> Okay, that Tanner. Anyway, Tanner Cole. And they are going to each have 30 minutes to ask questions of you randomly or specifically. Um, your responses, please try to keep them to a minute. Be brief. Succinct is the word here tonight. All right? Um, and I want to remind people that are listening, uh, you can call in with questions at 753-8136. And you can catch this on Cable 18, and also um, it will be shown on the website. And later on, we'll catch it online with the radio station and go from there. So, Rob, your 30 minutes starts right now. All righty. Uh, does this work? First of, all, first of all, this works? Okay. All right. All right. My first question, and both of my questions actually are to all of you. I'm not doing specific questions for each candidate. I'm doing them for all of you. We'll, we'll start uh, down on one end for the first one with John, and then we'll start on the other end with uh, Jeff for the second question. Um, so my first question is, the Burlington metropolitan area lost around 300 people in 2016. That's according to estimates from the U.S. Census Bureau. What can the city do to encourage residents to stay in the area long term? Well, I think, uh, I think part of the reason people are moving is because of neighborhoods and it looks like a general decline. So I think the city can be really active in a nuisance, nuisance abatement, uh, helping uh, those citizens that living in, a, in within blocks, you know, as far as enforcing different city codes, making sure yards are mowed, making sure street lights are put in. I think the city can, can be better at that. We have a lot of hardworking people. I put in a request for a city street light uh, two weeks ago because our street is real dark. And I was told, well, I'll get back to you in a couple days, and that's been two weeks ago. That we have to do better. And I think that's what we can do to help right away. Mr. Deal. Thank you. Um, I've been at this since February, knocking on doors. Um, I'm the only candidate that's been doing that since February. And that's because I want the input of the citizens. Um, that's something that we don't necessarily always get in um, elections like this, is the input. It's always the politicians or the candidates telling us what they're going to do for us. And this is what I've tabulated since February. And to me, it's the majority voice, because I go out every night between 3 and sunset and knock on doors, and the same thing, the very first thing that comes up is crime. We have got to get a handle on our crime. Number two is taxes. 
um, because we, like um, Ms. John said, we are, um, some of us are our poverty wages, some of us are just getting by, some of us are working multiple jobs, and we, when we talk about the interior section of this town, we need to get a hold of it because that's where our tax base is low, and so crime being number one and taxes being number two. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. L. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think one of the uh, major evacuations in our, in our uh, community has been the youth. I, I think there's probably others that go as well. I just had a son recently moved from here to uh, Pella because the job opportunities are greater. So I, I would think we need to do things to hold the youth here. I don't know whether that's a, a, a better improving education systems or what you do or, or, or jobs for those, those that youth. Uh, as Scott said taxes. Uh, taxes are, I think in Oh boy, in the early 90s, it was around 13 was the levy, and now it's like 16.33. So it's changed a bit, uh, but so is other prices as far as that goes. But, but it's getting up there. So I th that may be uh, pretty high on, on, on my list as well, Scott. So thank you. Yeah. Mr. Elmer. I can sum it up pretty quick. Within months of moving here, my wife who's from Georgia, said to me, she said, this isn't Mayberry anymore, is it? <laughs> and I said, no, it's not. Um, people leave the area, or they stay in the area, depending on crime, taxes, education, and property values. Um, our crime is some of the worst in the state. Um, that's got to be brought under control. I live seven doors down from the DeMarcus Chu shooting. On that block, there was a house for sale that had three offers that morning of the shooting. All three offers were withdrawn. Our education, Burlington High School, uh, graduation rate last year was just a hair above 70%. Uh, realtors are going to tell you that you know, schools are important to people. Jobs uh, that pay well are important to people. But if we don't get our crime, our taxes, our school system, and things in order, uh, we're not going to keep people here. Thank you. Mr. Fleming. I don't know how many people have left town. I know some left because the fertilizer plant cut back when they finally opened the plant. <clears throat> so I haven't talked to the people that have left. Uh, Burlington is not a perfect place. I understand that. But I think as a city councilman, if we can keep working toward trying to improve it, crime certainly is a factor and it's something we have to address. Uh, we're not the only town with that problem, I might add. But I think if we dedicate ourselves to trying to keep doing the right thing, having good city employees, and we have a lot of them, and try to do a good job, trying to be better tomorrow than we were today. That's the key. Thank you. Mr. Fleetner. Well, I actually moved away um, a couple of years ago to Florida for a year, and it made me realize the move away, what we had here in the community, and that's why we moved back. We need to build a community where people want to grow their families here, so we definitely need to invest in our youth. Um, if Burlington's going to thrive and survive, we need to put forefronts of, you know, better education, lowering the crime. I sound repetitive, but these are two things that people look at when they do move to a community. If we have low uh, crime rates and great education for kids, families tend to, uh, tend to stick in the area themselves. And I would also like to open it up to possibly doing more small and local businesses. Um, we're booming downtown right now, and I just want that to keep being kind of contagious. So if we can show the youth that there's an extra door that they can go down and stay in the area and open up their own entrepreneurship uh, business, we need to be behind that 100%. Thank you. Mr. Goffner. Uh, as I travel around the country like the rest of these uh, candidates, I've found that the uh, small home builders have having a tough time finding out what it is that the council wants them to do. Um, and by the way, Mr. DeGrocchi did not call me. So what I plan to do is to try to get the builders together with our legal council and get their input as we make policy. So one policy for everyone. They seem to be terribly confused about that. And uh, if we can get that straightened out, I think we can build this community together to achieve bigger and better things. Thank you very much. Mr. Hollenbeck. 
I believe education is probably number one. Uh, we need to continue working with our schools, building them to be better, uh, keeping our kids in school, uh, and keeping them off streets. Then that'll, you know, like after school programs, uh, that'll keep helping them, and that'll continue. We can offer programs that they wouldn't actually learn in school that they can learn outside, which can help bring more jobs into Burlington through like entrepreneurships if we offered incentives for kids that wanted to do that. Um, thank you. Mrs. John. Tech. I think you have to have affordable housing for people to move here. I don't think we have that now. I think that a lot of times people look and think, oh, I can't afford a 200, 300, 400 thousand dollar home. Let's have affordable housing so people, when they're looking for a place to live, even if it's just your rent, that they can afford it. Most people are trying to stay ahead in Burlington and trying to move ahead, and we just don't have that. Um, I think crime, I think we have to work hand in hand with the police department and make every neighborhood safe. Thank you. Mrs. Murray. I agree with Mr. Fleming. I, I question the 300 numbers. We did lose quite a few to the fertilizer plant, and then we also do have an aging population. I don't know if that the numbers give into account those that, that uh, leave due to, due to death, but uh, that probably would affect the numbers as well. I am excited about all the development that's occurring on the riverfront, and I think that's going to be enticing and appealing to young families that want to move here. Uh, it has been shown the more recreational opportunities that, you, that a community offers that people want to move there. They're excited and a synergy starts and then suddenly Burlington is the hot place to move to, to work in, to, and to play. I think we need investment in our library. Education is critical along with the schools. Uh, downtown growth that I see is phenomenal. I'm really excited about what's happening there. Uh, good uh, real estate there, good uh, tax roll income there. And uh, development of the river front is prime real estate property, so that's good. And prime, the crime, rather, uh, we do need more integration of police into the, the neighborhoods, and I think that will take care of itself. Mr. Oliver. Uh, I can say from experience that uh, there's a lot of good reasons to move into Burlington because I moved here for those reasons, to be closer to work, closer to uh, the events that take place in Burlington and things I want to do. Um, but have, being somebody who grew up in Danville, I went to school alongside a lot of people whose parents uh, pulled them out of the Burlington School District because of its issues. Uh, my own mother didn't want me going to Burlington School District because of her negative experience. And I do think it's, it's come a long way. It's improved a lot, but it does still need improvement. Uh, and typically you see uh, communities with strong school districts have lower crime rates. Uh, so that's one way to address the crime rate. Um, and when you look into moving into a new community, when you look into raising a family like people my age are getting ready to do, uh, you're going to look at the school district. And if you have a school district that needs improvement, you're not going to want to move your family there. So thank you. Mr. Rinker. Um, so three words, uh, opportunity, amenities, and secondary education. Um, if you want to maintain a population or grow one, you need to have opportunities both in housing and in employment. Um, the council is really limited to what they can do, but the best thing they can do is provide an optimum environment for both, both of those things to grow. Um, as far as secondary education goes, we're very lucky and fortunate to have a, uh, a community college in our community. Um, but we need to hopefully provide an environment where they can go out um, and get another institution to come in and provide a secondary education um, in engineering and technical trades. Um, that's the, the one of the fastest growing labor markets in our country and by uh, providing uh, that environment um, we can see more of our uh, residents go into the trades and then they'll be more likely to stay. Mr. Rogers. Um, most of the people who I know who have left Burlington have mostly left due to lack of income or lack of entertainment options. Um, and we all know that the, the, uh, the uh, work market in Burlington does have a bit of room, a lot of room for growth. Uh, so I would want us to try to help bring businesses in and also increase the um, wages of the businesses we already have. Um, as far as entertainment goes, I really like what we're doing with the auditorium or the plans that I've heard about it. I would like to see us continue 
to use that, utilize that as a resource to give people more things to do. We need activities in Burlington to keep people here. Uh, the last thing, of course, is crime, and I would like to look, have us look more into more co community policing type of solutions to help with that. We need to get our police more integrated with our communities, uh, have them do more events like what they're doing with the South Hill events, and I would like to see uh, one of those a month, if not more often than that. Uh, thank you. Mr. Stivers. Well, I have to agree with Mr. Rogers here. Um, one thing that we really need is more jobs for Burlington. Um, every day I see people come into our store and saying that they're working two, three jobs to provide for their family. And I say to them, where do you find time for your family? I mean, if you're working all those hours, then you don't have any personal time. And uh, in the last couple years um, with Silligan and uh, the jobs that have come to Burlington, we just need to expand on that. We need to, as city councilmen, we need to find ways to advertise Burlington, to make it out there so that we can attract big business. Um, we can't rely on Case, GE, Champion. We need to get new business. Thank you very much. Don't get too comfortable. We're coming back around. <laughs> Within the allotted time, give us a big idea that you believe, if implemented right now, would make Burlington a better place. We start again with you, Jeff Stivers. I can put on the spotlight right away. Um, I, guess, I guess the biggest one, somebody actually um, came into the store a couple weeks ago, and they, they put something in my mind that's kind of been bugging me for quite a while. And it was, why don't we, we're right next to the Mississippi River. Why don't we um, have some kind of event or something that shows off being that close to the Mississippi? Um, some of the other towns close by, they have like, big canoe races or a big boat show, something that, that actually uh, four features, you know, the Mississippi and being close to it. So I think that would be something to consider. Mr. Rogers, big idea. Well, anybody who's been following my uh, campaign uh, knows that I'm a big proponent of green energy, so you can mark that off on your bingo cards right now. Um, and um, I, I would continue with that. I feel as though if we implemented it properly and we were able to uh, distribute the savings amongst the, the residents of Burlington, that we could basically give people more money in order to have them be able to pump that back into our economy to help our small businesses. Uh, that, that is my big idea. It would help people to be able to save money to buy houses, grow the tax base, and lots of other things. I, I just think that it's a great way to help people save money. Thank you. Mr. Rinker, big idea. Um, so we've talked a lot about crime. Uh, one of the uh, um, tools that is in my plan in order to uh, try and uh, combat some of the recent violent crime that we've had in our community is creating a um, community organization that's in partnership with the Burlington Police Department where people within our community um, would go through a, a training program with the Burlington Police Department. Um, they would then go out into the community and have community watch sessions. Uh, it, it happens in other communities and it's been very successful. Um, it, they would basically have communication with the Burlington Police Department, they'd be trained by them, uh, but their whole purpose would be to observe uh, and not uh, interact with any issues that are going on out in the community. And I think um, by doing this, you're providing a presence of law enforcement um, in, in our community and it would help uh, deter a lot of the crime that we've seen. Mr. Oliver. Um, I don't think it's as simple as one big idea. Because uh, Burlington is facing a lot of challenges upcoming and currently, um, and I don't think I think saying one big idea to make Burlington better uh, oversimplifies uh, the issues we face upcoming. 
uh, we have to look at more multifaceted approaches, and it's, and it's not going to be one big magical cure-all that does this. Uh, we're going to have to implement a series of smaller ideas uh, that target certain aspects and certain issues that the community faces. So uh, my answer to that would be I don't think there is one big idea that's, that's going to ultimately solve Burlington's problems. So, Mrs. Murray. If anyone's ever had the opportunity to vacation to San Antonio's Riverwalk, it is beautiful. We could do that here. <laughs> Money was no object. We could have a boutique hotel. We could have fountains. We could have people renting rollerblades. They could rent some boats. You talked about doing some boating or something on the river, jet skis, little eateries. You could uh, ride your bike or rollerblade or walk and get a slice of fresh raspberry pie. You could get fresh pastries beautiful bars and dining and music and we could really make Burlington a destination place. Mrs. John. I agree with Mr. Oliver. I don't think there's one big idea that people would say, oh yeah, that's, that will make Burlington great. I think there's a lot of things that as the council that we need to work together on. I think you have some ideas that are not going to work and some that are. But I think, like I told the people that I work with, anytime you want to ask me something, ask me. And we'll see what we can do. That's all you can do is ask. Mr. Hollenbeck. I'd like to see more municipal jobs. Uh, I'd like to see the city actually run its own energy. Uh, that way, the city will get the money coming in and it'll stay in the city that we can put back into the city. It won't be leaving the city, heading to Wisconsin and where else that it shouldn't be going. And that include things like even our own internet. Uh, faster, better speeds will keep, uh, <coughs> would want to bring businesses in. Mr. Goffner. Uh, thank you. Uh, I hate to tell you this, but the one big idea has already happened. The fertilizer's here and it's up, fertilizer plant's here and it's up and running. So we're too late for that one. I agree, you need a lot of things, but the thing that, bugs me a lot and I hear a lot about it is uh, the city. I get letters about how dirty it is, how the junk piles are building up and this and that and the other. So if I'm lucky enough to get elected, I'm going to try my best to clean that up. And instead of having the junk pile on the Mississippi, we're going to have the shining city on the hill. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fleetner. Well, I agree with uh, Mr. Oliver that there's several small cracks that we need to fill before we get the foundation solid. Uh, to move on to bigger and better things. Um, just an idea, everything starts with an idea. Um, the neighborhood watch program, I think we need to be community policing, like Mr. Rogers said there. Uh, one of my ideas, um, the precincts that we use for voting, we could do a precinct neighborhood watch and have monthly meetings with precinct leaders and get the police involved and just show a presence and have a face-to-face -face meet and greet with the community. I feel the community would and that be more strong together knowing their police officers and knowing knowing themselves to uh, respond to that so thank you mr fleming i don't have any magical answers here to me the key thing for a city council is to listen to the people to invite people to come forward and tell us what they think a lot of the good ideas that might help this city aren't necessarily from city council members they're from citizens that live here and work here so I found in my years that uh, some of the best ideas we've had didn't come from me, they came from citizens. So I think as a city councilman, we have to be very good listeners. There's nothing wrong with listening to what people have to say. Thank you. Mr. Elmer. I'm gonna stay focused on crime. I met with uh, Chief Beard, and so far this year, the police department's received over 33,000 calls. Um, and I met with Amy Beavers. Um, we have a big problem here in crime and in drugs. The majority of these problems are coming from rental properties. And one thing I'd like to see the city implement is on rental properties, fourplexes or bigger, I would like to see an ordinance requiring perim perimeter video. Uh, the police can't be everywhere, but video helps. And if we could do that in the areas of, of where the crime is, then we could help our police department and in turn help our citizens uh, and cut down on the, the drugs and the crime. Mr. L. Thank you, I, I too agree with Mr. Oliver. I, I don't think there's any one single thing that we can do to uh, change everything. 
There is one thing that pops into my mind I've been thinking about for some 20 years, though, and that's uh, duplication of services. I think that the Burlington and the West Burlington Fire Department should have been combined 20 years ago. They're not. They could have been. They could have operated uh, probably at a less expense to all citizens within that area, as could some of the PD operations could be. Uh, maybe now with the new building at the U.S. Bank down there, the PD, uh, may still have room for the Sheriff's Department. And so I don't see any reason to have two facilities. So that's my big idea. There you go. Mr. Deal. Thank you. Um, the thing I'd like to touch on, um, just as others have touched on, we've mentioned crying briefly from several different people, and there's no cure-all. And I don't know who said that, but there is no cure to everything. It's a matter of looking at priorities. This city has not prioritized what is most important to the majority of the citizens. And I am just speaking from the people that I talk to every night, six days a week. Number one is crime. And we've got to tackle crime first before we can get beyond anything else. Um, yes, everyone has mentioned excellent, excellent ideas, but if we don't tackle crime, bring four more police officers on board, start implementing community policing, which we used to do, which was good, um, we need to continue down that road and continue to find more innovative ideas to attack crime first, and then everything else will fall in place. Mr. Billups. Uh, Google, Apple, bring them in. I, uh, no, seriously, you know, you want to know a secret? Burlington's pretty great, and it's great because of people like here. We have a lot of great ideas out there. I don't have one great idea. I do think there's things that we as a city council can do, and that's sometimes get out of the way. Uh, there's a lot of big ideas floating around in Burlington right now. There's a boardwalk they're looking at, a splash pad down, down at the riverfront. When we had the fountains before down at the riverfront, you couldn't keep kids out of them. So why not embrace that and, and, and allow kids to have something to do? Um, I think there's a lot of great things going on here in, in Burlington. We need to capitalize on it. We're the back-to-back -back champs of development along the Mississippi River. We don't trump that enough. We're a top 30 micropolitan. So yeah, we have some issues, but we have some great things we need to really capitalize on. So thank you. Uh, you have about three minutes left. If well, I'm going to defer to uh, Mr. Cole here, yes. Defer to Mr. Cole. <laughs> All right, we get the next three minutes. We'll get to yeah. the hard stuff now. Give him some ideas. Anyway, call in. If you call in, it's 319-753-8136. Thank you. So I have a specific question for each candidate, and I'm going to go in the order of names that the courthouse gave me, which I believe is the order you filed in. So starting with Scott Deal. Scott, you just said you want to hire four more cops. Uh, I checked a few days with the budget director. That'd be about $300,000 <laughs> without police cars or training. You also say you will not ever raise taxes. I know that you want to minimize operations at the auditorium, but even if you do that, we still need more than $100,000 to make up those 300000 What other departments are those cuts coming from? Good question. Um, I had the fortunate opportunity to uh, look over the budget in its paper form. Um, you can get it online, but I prefer paper, and that's what I asked Mr. Furneaux when I came to him for his assistance in looking at the budget. Our city budget is bloated. Um, there are areas within our city budget that we could cut that are non-essential services, and What's most important when I say that is that essential services for a city, what cities were meant to be all about, was about providing public safety, infrastructure, sewers, water. Those are the types of things that cities were meant to be. Aside from that, it's a peripheral area and it's non-essential. Let's first attack what is number one in our budgets. 
and that's public safety, streets, roads, infrastructure. And thank you for, very much. I'm out of time. <laughs> so Michael Elmer. Michael, you lived here for 18 years. You moved away for 40. You came back two years ago. You ran Donald Trump's county level campaign, and now you want to be on city council. You told me yesterday you'd like Burlington to step back through time to how you, it was as you, as you when you were a kid. Don't you think the people running the city should be the people who stuck around in Burlington all that time? Not necessarily. Um, I've learned over, over my years that when you stay within a bubble, sometimes you can't see out of the forest because you're in it. Um, I've lived in multiple different places, large cities and smaller cities. I came back here because my family's been here 56 years and, and I've always been attached to this town. Um, and I have some, some ideas and some visions that I have gained through my experience in living in other places, uh, not just specifically Burlington itself. <coughs> so I think that actually gives me an advantage uh, to some degree because I might bring some ideas that come from other areas that can help this city as well. Robert Fleming. That's me. Bob, <laughs> you, you've been on this council for quite a few years, and I am at these meetings every week. I hear you speaking up less than every other person on the council. Why should Burlington stick around with you? Because I don't think what I say at council meetings really means a lot. What really means a lot is how we vote on the important issues, how well we listen to the public. I don't have a fixed agenda. I don't have a program where this is what I'm going to do. First of all, the word I doesn't work. It's got to be we. I also think there are activities and groups outside the city council that should have a lot of input as to how this city proceeds and attacks these problems of crime and what have you. This question about the budget, that's a challenge every year. If anybody's got that figured out, call me quickly. <laughs> it's a tough one. But there again, that's part of the challenge. It's part of the job, and I think we can do it. Thank you. Richard Goffner, when we did an interview the other day, you told me you would approve anything the chief of police put, puts on your desk. You also said you think the city's budget is bloated. Several city staffs have people doing jobs that used to belong to two or three people. Where exactly are you finding this bloat in the budget, and are you going to turn a blind eye to the city's largest department, the police department? No, I, I don't believe I said anything about that uh, being bloated. What I said was that anything the chief of police wants, I'm probably going to vote for. I agree with everything that's said up here, that crime is horrible and we've got to get it stopped. So they want something, I'm going to vote for it. Uh, Jeremy Hollenbeck, um, I was wondering if you've spoken to anyone at City Hall about your proposal to start a city municipal energy company, and if you know anything about the dollar amounts behind that. Yeah, uh, I haven't talked to anybody about it, but I have looked into how other cities have implemented it, and you're looking about two and a half million. If we're looking at solar farms, we're looking about two and a half million per thousand homes. So it would be a pretty big expense if we would actually go through with it. But we could start on a smaller scale and we could uh, allow people to put their own solar panels on their own houses. And that way they would be able to save money and then when they are saving money other people want to save money and really it just turned into a whole community project. Just, just a quick reminder, speak into the microphones. <laughs> uh, Kathy John. So a large part of being on the council is having a critical eye to be able to see through things. And a large part of that is doing your homework outside of council meetings. So you have a lot of jobs, you have a lot of kids, you have a lot of grandkids. How are you going to find time for all that and how much time do you think you can find? <laughs> I've always been able to, I went to college and I had three kids and I was raising by myself and I had homework. So I don't think that's a problem for me. I know how to read. I know how to do homework. So I think I could do it. I'm pretty sure I'm going to do it. I wouldn't have decided to run if I didn't think I could find the time. Um, I'm pretty, my employers are all pretty with me on running. Um, I think that you have to figure out what you're running for and what the citizens 
the people that I work with, and there's a lot of them because I have that job, what they want. And that's what you vote for. Um, that's how you want to vote. I want them to tell me what they think is right, and I'm going to fight for that. I think that you have to. I don't think that you can be a city council person and not listen. And I mean listen. I mean, I know people hear, but you have to listen. Matt Rinker. Yes, sir. You are an insurance agent, and you sell home insurance, right? Yes. So you've said Burlington missed out on a big opportunity by not giving Ryan Negrocki a TIF incentive to get Correct. more houses built in town. Yes. Do, do you think your job selling home insurance at, to locals would at all cloud your decisions when it comes to housing developments? Not at all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Simple as that. No, um, so here, here's the thing with TIF. Um, uh, TIF is a tool that a community can use in order to encourage investment. Other communities use that tool all of the time, and it's something that our community has been reluctant to use over the last however many years. Um, we're not losing anything by providing TIF. Um, that's one of the largest misconceptions with regard to TIF. Um, you can't lose something you didn't have to begin with. We talk all the time about how we're going to come up with the money in order to pay for things. Well, growth is how you do that. Um, and whether we receive that money today is irrelevant. The goal is to make sure that we're receiving that money 5, 10, 15 years from now because our costs in our community, whether it's city employees or a wind farm or Burlington police officers, is always going to go up. Well, we can't afford to continue to grow those different departments or add those amenities or create these different programs that people can take advantage of if we can't pay for them. Jeff Stivers, when we spoke before, uh, you said a lot about uh, protections for renters in town, and I wanted to know what specific protections you're talking about. Well, I've lived over here in Burlington for about, about 30 years, and I've rented um, my whole time, and I've had some pretty bad experiences with landlords, and... Um, the biggest problem that I see is when somebody has an issue with a landlord, um, getting in contact with them and getting the problem solved has always been difficult because when you're dealing with landlords, they want you to pay your rent on time. But then when you have an issue, like say um, your sink is backed up, well, we'll take care of it when we get time. And that's always been the biggest problem with Burlington. Um, we have customers that come into where I work all the time, and they're always telling me that I'm paying eight, nine hundred dollars a month rent, but yet I have no laundry facilities. I have uh, a sink that's been stomped up, you know, for months and the landlord says he's going to take care of it, but hasn't taken care of it. I just want time something to hold landlords accountable. So William L. You, uh, you told me in our interview that you really like Burlington and you'd like to see it stay largely the same as it has been for years. You've been a key leader in the city for a long time. What do you have to offer for Burlington residents who want things to change a lot? That's a, that's a duplication of what you asked me before and I didn't have a really good answer then either. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think probably my, the largest motivation for me to run again is having been involved before and, and it, quite truthfully I miss it. But I think the, 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 the biggest motivation is the neat things that are happening here right now. I think I talked about the $140,000 towards the reserves. I talked about, you know, I think with you anyway, I talked about adding police officers and firefighters and, and, and so on. And so, I, you know, I think there's some great things happening here and I'm kind of enthusiastic about being part of that. So I don't have a, a great answer for you there other than that. <laughs> No, it's a good answer. It's a good answer. Uh, Ryan Rogers, 
Uh, I've been asking everybody about the four police officers. So far, you're the only one I've had who looked at the number and said, no, we probably can't afford to do that. You say we're better off serving underlying causes like poverty. So how exactly do we solve those underlying causes of crime? Well, I would think that the first, we, we've got to be creative with, with, with uh, the way that we do that. Uh, we're not going to be able to do the simple, easy solution of raising uh, wages you know, directly. But we can find ways to uh, partner with nonprofits to help um, make it so homes or more energy homes and rental properties are more energy efficient to help renters save money as well. That's that's one way to go. There, there's lots of ways that we can look at it uh, from a different way. And if we invested that money into our homes and our communities and used. Uh, uh, all of the resources that we have in our community and put more resources into those, we could help with the underlying causes of poverty and uh, hopefully reduce crime in that way. John Billups. Yes, sir. You said this morning to me that people might see you as a pro-business candidate and you're a big guy with the Greater Burlington Partnership. So what tangible things do you want to see Burlington doing to help its poorest residents? Mm -hmm. Well, I think first and foremost, we, we can uh, encourage uh, job growth. You know, I think, yes, some people might view me as a cha pro-chamber candidate or a pro-business candidate, whatever that means. I've been accused of being a shill for the chamber, but I think cha the chamber staff will say that when I disagree with something, I'm pretty loud about it. Uh, but that being said, right now, there's, you know, we were talking about some things. Right now in Burlington, there's over 100 homes available for less than $100,000. But we need to make sure that those homes are in neighborhoods they want to work, live and work in. So there is affordable housing. And when someone moves out of those $100,000 homes, they buy those homes that Matt was talking about in some of those developments. So I, that, and I think we can continue to work with our uh, businesses to drive up more jobs. I, you can typically work, walk into Champion right now. Every time I look in the paper, they're advertising, walk in. If you can pass a drug test, you can get a job. And we have to do we have to do something to help those people get jobs. So, Chance Oliver, I keep hearing you talking about bringing young people like yourself to Burlington, keeping young people here. How do you suggest Burlington bucks national trends to attract and keep young people? What I suppose what national trends do you, are you referring to? Cities comparable to Burlington. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, again, like I said, a lot of that comes back to the school district. Uh, they, I think they have done an excellent job at improving it, but it still needs improvement. Um, and the stronger we can build our school district, I think the more likely people my age are going to be willing to move here and fill the vacant homes that John referred to uh, and be willing to raise a family in this community and, and increase that tax base. Uh, the, a lot of the national trend is towards even larger cities, but I, I personally know a lot of people that would love to move to a city our size because it does have a lot of the things that larger cities do have to offer, uh, but we suffer from the crime rate and the poorer education. Uh, and so those are things that we have to address to try and get people my age to want to move to Burlington and stay in Burlington. And Linda Murray, uh, you told me one of the biggest parts of your platform, I don't even see over there, are is infrastructure repairs. Can you be a little bit more specific about what infrastructure improvements you mean and where the money will come from for those? Infrastructure may not be a glamorous platform, but I think it's an important one. As we've watched the, the footage during the tsunami and the horrific hurricanes that we've had lately, if your infrastructure is collapsed, decayed, eroded, a mess, nobody wants to move there, and it is, is quite, quite painful. A um, few years back, I was in Washington, D.C., and actually trying to get some funding for a Cascade Bridge. It's difficult, but there is some federal funding out there. We just have to figure out how to tap into it. Um, it is kind of an eyesore for our community when we have bridges that are closed that we can't use. Now, I know some people would argue with me that live at the end of one of the other ends of Cascade Bridge say, hey, I kind of like it. I've got a closed street. But the rest of us that want to have access to the pool and access to the beautiful parks that we have in Burlington and the other amenities on that end of town don't really like side cutting and going on, on Harrison. So I think the money is there. We have to creatively seek for it. Uh, will we have it tomorrow? Maybe not. But I think that's, that's a worthy goal to be pursuing. And Cody Fleetner. 
I stole this from your Facebook page. Uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> the biggest message I've seen from you so far has been about after school programs. Why did you? Why are you running for city council and not the school board? <laughs> That's a very good question. Um, I feel I've got more to offer than just being on a school board. Um, like everything, everybody's been touching on. Um, the issues, but also the pride that we have in this town. I want to be more of that mentor of um, bringing pride and passion back into Burlington, giving it a new heartbeat. And I, I touched base on this before, our, our young growth is really where it's at. Um, we've got to have that strong foundation. I think Mr. Oliver had said that best in an interview too. Uh, he put it in great words that way. So I did have a question of why aren't you running for school board? And I just feel like I have more to offer on the council versus the school board. But I want to work with our, our schools and the community there. Cool. I just have a few yes or no stuff to go. First, show of hands, who here thinks that Burlington should hire more police officers? Just about everybody there. Cool. Should uh, police body camera footage be a public record? We can start. Anybody say no? I did. I did. Cool. That's not easy to answer. Yeah, it depends. I will, I will clarify that by saying it's situational. Uh, it depends on the situation. So I worked in law enforcement in the military. I can tell you that there are situations that shouldn't be public record, but it depends on the situation. And that is Mr. <coughs> Rinker speaking. I would agree. And Mr. L would agree. All right. I, I do not believe in the case of murder that uh, the uh, body cameras should be released because the uh, threat of a lawsuit is constant. I don't, I don't think the time ever runs out if you have a murder involved. You can sue any time. So I think it would be detrimental to the city to release that in the case of murder. That was Mr. Goffner. So I'd like to go down the line real quick. We can start with Billups here. Could you ever support cutting the library's budget to bolster public safety budgets? I'd have to say a knee-jerk reaction would be no. We've been cutting the library left and right uh, for the last few years to try to balance the budget. And that is a wonderful amenity that was provided by the citizens of Burlington for the city of Burlington. And what I mean by that, if by large part, that was handled by private donations. So I. I'd have to say no, we'd have to find the money somewhere else. Scott? Um, yes. Um, I agree in part with what um, John said that yes, um, uh, the money, you know, we need to look, and the library is considered a non essential service, but it, it is a sacred cow, and it's very important. My wife and I use it every week you know, books, uh, videos, so I use it. Um, but there are still places that we could cut. Um, just as an example, real quickly, um, when you're comparing city sizes, like Galesburg or Ottumwa compared to Burlington, which are in similar size, what's different about them is that they only have one head librarian running, running their library. We have four. That's not necessary. Um, aside from that, no more cutting as far as the library at all. Time. Thank you. William? You may be asking the wrong person. I'm on that board, and you took $250,000 from us. It's up there. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's, I, I would have to be really reluctant to cut the library mainly because they've already lost uh, uh, several people. Uh, it's just everybody's trying to hang on there and provide the same number of services. Uh, so I would probably be very reluctant to cut there. The other little bit of a thing that I'd like to point out, too, is that the council has two duties and responsibilities. One is infrastructure. The other one's quality of life. And without a library, your quality of life, would, would your level would go down some. So yeah. It's hard to keep that balance. Michael. No, I would not support cutting anything to the library. Um, it's a facility that's utilized by a lot of people in this town. 
And I think we have other areas that we can make cuts without having to affect uh, a facility that many people here use. And um, many people from our homeless shelter use it as a source to find jobs. Many of our lower income people use it for the same purpose and to research. So no, I wouldn't support that at all. Mr. Fleming? I think it's dangerous for a council member to say what he will or will not cut. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on the circumstance at the time. We have to look at the whole picture. I love the library. I go to the library, but I love everything in Burlington. So I have to cut something maybe. Well, that's part of the job. Thank you. Mr. Fleetner? Uh, I would have to say no as well. I feel if we cut more from the library, we are cutting into the brain of Burlington, and it's a good support system from the other Mr. candidates. Goff Mr. Goffner? Uh, I'm a businessman, or has been, I should say, and if you opened a business and it was as busy as a library, and you were a good businessman, you could figure out how you could improve on it, make bigger things and better things and more things, and stay open more hours. Cutting a library is a really bad idea. Mr. Hollenbeck? No, I do not support cuts to the library. I believe it's extremely important to Burlington and a lot of lower income families. Thank you. Ms. John? Sticks. No, I, don't, I wouldn't cut the library. I was one of the op opponents against the library when it was first being built. And I said, no, we don't need a new library. I was raised in the old library. I went to school at St. Paul, so <coughs> it was right across the street. And I said, no, no, no. And then when I walked in the library, I thought, why was I stupid? This is gorgeous. This is beautiful. And I use the library myself. Ms. Murray? Definitely not. I was broken hearted the first time the library did not pass. In fact, I was so angry I was going to move out of Burlington. I remember I was sitting, stopped by a train, and I was so angry I was going to leave Burlington. The library is our livelihood of a community. I think if you cut that, you're really cutting off one of your appendages. Um, uh, I was sad when I was working on my master's degree that the library was not open longer hours. I, I felt like I moved from a community that didn't have a, a service that I definitely needed. We do need education. It allows us to live in harmony with our neighbors. Mr. Oliver? Uh, no, I would absolutely disagree with cutting funding from the library. As I've indicated, I, I, I'm not in favor of increasing the police force in the first place, so I wouldn't see it as necessary to cut funding from the library. And additionally, uh, with the fact that I do want to work hand-in-hand -hand with the school board to try and improve our district as much as I can, uh, cutting from the library would undermine that the entire purpose of me running. So, Mr. Rinker? Uh, I would just like to echo uh, Mr. Fleming's comments. I, I would never say that I will or won't do something because things change, and if the council doesn't change with with the situation, it could be even worse for our community. However, I will tell you that I view the police department and the library at uh, an equal footing. So they are just as important as one another. And I'm sure Rhonda Freevert, if she's listening to this, would love to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rogers? It would take a calamity for me to want to cut the library. Um, I'd also like to say that I am also opposed to, if anybody's even thinking this, uh, any sort of privatization of library services as well. I would be opposed to that as well. Mr. Stivers. I would have to say definitely not. My son would probably never talk to me again <laughs> <laughs> because he loves the library. He goes down there a lot. Um, he loves the services. Um, he's a 12-year-old kid, and he's already taken college classes, so the library has helped him, and I'm sure it's helped a lot of your families, and I think it's just a uh, service that we need. You have about, oh, a few minutes, but... Let's let the public do it. So, so are you finished yeah. for now? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I appreciate that. I thank you. Um, I thank you for Rob Sussman and uh, Tanner, what's that kid's name again? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I remember it. I remember it. It's true. Anyway, <laughs> I thank you both for coming here. Uh, uh, Rob was Richard Broadcasting and Tanner was a Hawkeye. And I um, appreciate them taking their time out to, and to educate all of us um, 
uh, to give us better understanding of, of the views of the plethora of candidates. So thank you very much. We will take now a break, um, about five minutes. And uh, once again, I want to remind people, if you have a call-in question, the number is 319-753-8131, or 8136. And if you're in the audience and you want to write out a question, there are some cards over there, and so be feel, feel free to do that. So thank you. We'll take a five-minute hiatus. Five, minutes, Thank you. Jeez, we're not all going to shake our hands. <laughs> 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 I can remember it. <laughs> I know. Shame. Oh, I knew they were there. <laughs> That's right. You said Friday. These, these questions, oh, same way. They only get a minute or less. Okay. I'm the fact. If they address it to everybody yeah. there, you know. I have um, my, my other to, question that I need to say. I like the word I <laughs> like to say it. I like to write it. I do appreciate you guys are here. Please don't get harassed. That's all right. No, it's a bit. <laughs> That's the joy of newspapers. They see your name and it's read on the reach. That I was going to say, they hear me. They hear it. I say That's a distinct name. voice. They, and, and, and people go around, they sit, and I, I guess my name is a thing. So like saying I'm Rob Sussman. I've a trivia thing one time. At the end of the trivia question, whenever he would finish like some exposition of the trivia question, he would end it with I'm Rob Sussman. I had no idea it was in the office. <laughs> I think maybe Libby was there.
Were we saving it, Tom? Tell me right now before I do it. I don't even bring it up on air. I thought I'm not going to answer it, so you can leave me a message. Oh, yeah. Definitely. It's crazy. You're right. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's cheap for one of us. Yeah. And you know exactly what you want to say to Joe, but then you say, totally yeah. something different. Oh. We've done it. Yeah. It happens. I'm not from Burlington, you know, it's kind of upset when somebody tells me that I'm from Burlington. But, but you know what? I'm here in this room, and I like it here. I'm choosing this day here. Since 61, I'm here. It's just not. I'm wearing a rubber too, and I'm pretty sure. It's just, 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can tell you right off the bat a lot of the ideas I have you know, I explained in one minute yeah. very easily. But see that is even well, it should be, you know, but at the time, oh, yeah, but it was yeah pretty much, at the time, it was about 200 bucks, and it ended up joining me 300 bucks, right? 
You know, I bought my first set of tires. Exactly. I did buy tires from you at one time, too. Probably about 20 years ago. Wait on you. 43 years ago. Because I've always tried to keep my money locally. Always. This is more fun than I thought it was going to be. Okay. We're about ready to start again. It's sort of like school. I had to go out and chase in the, you know, reluctant students or whatever. Is that right? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, you don't have to agree with me. No. <laughs> now I do really have to seriously, um, once again, thank, thank the um, two people from the media and for coming tonight. And thank the city council, you know, for allowing us to use the chambers um, for this very important um, event, or at least I think it is, because I, I've heard some good things just now about people saying that they know a little bit more about you and they can identify you a little better, so that's all good. All right, um, at this point I'm going to ask questions that have been submitted from the audience and from the phone conversations. And some of them are very large questions. Uh, difficult to answer in one minute. However, that's all the time you're going to get. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> we see the timekeeper. <laughs> well, I got a turn for it, but. There you go. Um, and so, consequently, uh, try to try to fo we, we want to focus on this and just try to um, do this very you know in a specific manner. So maybe there are a whole bunch of different things that, that are possibilities, but think of it as just maybe one particular thing that you could see off the top of your head. And I'm going to start in the middle, sort of middle, with Mr. Goffner. And this question is, what do you see as a solution for the overcrowding of the city jail or county jail? What would you support doing? Well, uh, there are several ways you can solve that problem. Of course, you can farm them out to other jails who aren't full. That would be the first option. And eventually, I suppose, if we don't get crime under control, we're going to have to spend some tax money enlarging that. Okay. Mr. Hollenbeck? <laughs> well, I believe we should be looking at what the crime was done and lesser crimes we could possibly move them out, put them in some kind of rehab program, and get them back in the streets and being a, a, a useful citizen. Okay. Mr. Fleetner. I'm going to have to copy uh, Mr. Hollenbeck's answer. I, I like that. Um, I would strongly agree with what he said. Um, kind of look at the reasoning of why they're in jail and, you know, constitute uh, different ways of kind of segregate, no, I don't want to say segregating, but getting, you know, the lesser criminals not in jail and maybe get them in the rehab program because there's a lot of people that can't get up on their feet after, you know, they've served their time, so. Okay. And generally as a teacher, I hate copying, but in this case. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Former teacher. <laughs> okay, Ms. John. I agree. I think that you have to look at lesser crimes, white collar crimes, what, or a violent felon. I think that you have to look at that. But we also have to remember when we farm pe people out, it costs us money. So we have to see what are we doing to either help prevent crime or what are they doing to, to commit the crime? Is it because of drugs, raise their family, you know, trying to get money? I think we need to look at it all. There's not one cure-all for everything, but I think if we try, we can. Thank you. You can keep going. If no, we I'm try, good. we can make it work, right? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Fleming. Like most of these questions, there are no easy answers. That's right. <coughs> First of all, it's a county jail. Let's That's be right. sure we understand that. I don't think anybody's very happy with the jail being full. I know the police department sure isn't. And I think all we can do is keep working with the police to hopefully cut back on crime we do have uh, programs in the city now for people that have been convicted but are not in jail. Maybe we have to expand that program. Okay, thank you. Ms. Murray? Research shows that it is actually cheaper and more effective to rehab returning prisoners than it is to incarcerate them. 
And there's also preventative things that we can try. There is a, a program called a donut or do not program that Ames uses. In a nutshell, I know it's only a minute, but in a nutshell, they have a, a police officer for, from the city of Ames and a police officer from ISU, and they sit together, and you can go and you can Google it. It's a YouTube video, and they're gobbling donuts rapid fire. Do not disrespect. Do not uh, steal. Do not. And it's really cute, and it's gone viral, and that's a preventative thing, and we could try some options like that perhaps. Okay. Uh, Mr. Elmer. I think the simplest way to take care of an overcrowded jail is to reduce crime so that we don't have as many people in jail. Um, and, that and that's starts, a complex thing. I'm sorry? <laughs> yes, that is complex. a complex thing, but yes. that is a solution. I mean, if, if people do the crime, they have to do the time because if there's no punishment associated with it, then people won't change. Uh, but the, it, the fewer crimes we have, the fewer people we'll have in jail. Thank you. Mr. Oliver? Uh, I'd have to stand by most of my colleagues here uh, in that reevaluating nonviolent offenders uh, and is it really necessary to use a jail cell for somebody uh, that's in there for nonviolent crime? Uh, but it is kind of a multifaceted approach um, because reducing crime takes a lot of time and it is a very complex issue. Um, and that it would be a more long term solution. Short term it, it is incredibly difficult to look at because, as uh, Mr. Fleming said, it is a county jail. So it's not just Burlington criminals in there. Uh, so we can change our, the own, our, our way of enforcing crime, but that's not going to change the entire counties. Uh, but there are ways. Mr. L? I've talked with Doug Irvine, the administrator at the jail, and Doug has indicated that, yes, it is overcrowded. He's also indicated that he spends very large dollars to transport those prisoners elsewhere to house them. <clears throat> I, I think a lot of the crime that we have is actually drug related. If there are drug places or ways to, uh, to pull that group of people out of that jail, replace them, reassign them, maybe treatment centers, whatever, somehow, it may lessen the, the jail, uh, 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 you know, people out there and so on. But that's about the only thing I can think of. Okay, Mr. Rinker. Um, I would just kind of, I, I agree a lot with what's been said. I would just say that the, the issues with the county jail are slightly outside the scope of the Burlington City Council. Um, <coughs> short term, you can uh, expand the jail. Um, that's, the, that's the immediate fix. Uh, long term, as long as you create aggressive policies in order to combat crime in the community, and then the long term, you, you'll have less crime. Uh, which results in, in less people being sent to jail. Um, I, I would like to think um, that uh, we are already uh, uh, not keeping people in jail that don't need to be there. For example, people that have committed lesser crimes, I would, I would like to think aren't there today, for example. Uh, I know well, if somebody gets arrested, they have a bond. Uh, somebody comes in, they pay that bond, they get to go home, and, and they sit there until until it's they get their day in court. So I think we're already doing a lot of what we've talked about. Um, but at the end of the day, short fix, expand the jail, long term, aggressive policies, less crime. Okay, Mr. Deal. I would really have to echo on Mr. Rinker there. Um, it is a county jail. We're a city. Uh, we deal with city uh, policing and crime. And we do need to attack the crime that we have in the city aggressively. Um, yes, there may be people that are overcrowding the jail that some of my other colleagues have said don't necessarily belong there. Um, and I agree with them. If there are programs that are cheaper and more affordable that we don't have to put them in jail, that they get treatment or whatever it may be, um, I'm all in favor of that. I'm all in favor of what the taxpayers think is the most efficient way to solve this problem. It's a complex problem. And I can't answer, just like my colleagues here can't answer it in one minute or less. Um, but yes, uh, I think Matt Renker really hit it on the nail. Um, as far as uh, what needs to be done in the future. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rogers. Um, 
Well, uh, Mr. L had touched on uh, what I feel as though the driver of our crime explosion in this town has been is that it has been drug related. And the reason why I am so dead set on uh, anti poverty measures is that people turn to drug related crimes, drug related activities, in order to make up for a shortfall that the city is not providing for them to be able to live a decent quality of life. So that would be one aspect of it. Um, we would probably need to do something to alleviate the overcrowding, whether it be farming it out or um, expanding it in the short term, but I would prefer not to do that. And I, I would like to also mention that um, I don't believe that a lower level nonviolent offenses deserve for a criminal to be in prison or jail at that point in time. And I also want to focus on one other preventative measure uh, for us, which is we need to look at trying to get a Big Brothers and Big Sisters program back in Burlington. A lot of crime is youth driven. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Billups. Oh, it's me. Oh. Yes, that's you. I forgot Scott went. Uh, well, first of all, laws are on the books for a reason. They have to be enforced. And so uh, while I would agree that I would like to see nonviolent criminals not uh, necessarily incarcerate, incarcerated unnecessarily, the law says that they have to be there, they have to be there. So we'll have to either short term look at work with the county. Uh, it is county jail. Uh, what can we do to either expand that, farm that out cheaper? Uh, but we've all talked about how crime is bad, okay? And for us to say now, on the other hand, well, yeah, but I don't want these people in there. I, I'm sorry that you broke the law. You go in. That's the, w the way I see it. Okay. Mr. Stivers. I think uh, one thing that nobody's really touched on is the fact that uh, you're sitting in jail for six to eight months before you actually come up for trial. I think we need to figure out ways to get these criminals to trial quicker, get them done, get them sent off to prison if they need to go to prison. Um, just figure out ways to better improve that process. All right, thank you. Um, as I looked at this question, obviously I know that this, uh, it's a county jail, not the city jail, and I, I said that, whatever. But uh, the one thing, the one component that I that has already been mentioned here uh, this evening was the idea of cooperation between the West Burlington and the Burlington and the Des Moines County uh, law enforcement agencies. And I don't know if that, uh, how many of you think that might be, raise your hand, how many of you think that might be a way of dealing with the situation? Because it involves drug use, as some people have mentioned, but it also involves Great. mental illness and I, I some other things. I don't understand your, your question, um, because they so, don't have a jail for us to... No, the, we have Where's the county it? jail, but okay. how do you think, do you think that perhaps um, increased cooperation between the, I, among the agencies might be a way to approach some of that. Okay. But everybody has to, you know, the, all the entities involved, of course, would have to agree. And I, you guys are cooperating really well. I'm impressed. So, cooperation and communication. Are you, <laughs> are you saying that the, the police department and the West Burlington Police Department and the Sheriff's Department don't cooperate with each no, other? No, they okay. do. A, they do cooperate, but if, it, you know, I, they could more it, 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 a, a more concentrated and more focused way, perhaps looking at, because it's going to involve finding solutions and answers to some of the problems that have been dumped on the community and so forth. But anyway, that's my editorial. So um, this is very quick. I'm not going to give you a minute. <laughs> but what do you see as the biggest problem facing the council the next year? What do you see as the biggest problem? And don't say, well, I can't really think of one. Think of one. What you see as the biggest problem facing the council this coming year? Not raising the taxes. I think that you're going to have a budget that it's going to say we need to raise the taxes, and I don't think people are going to go for that. I don't. I don't think you can do that again. Okay. So Ms. John thinks that one of the big issues is going to be the need to raise taxes. I think when they do the taxes. budget, it's going to say, well, we need to do an increase of whatever. I don't think people want their taxes <coughs> raised again. No, people do not want their taxes. They're not raised getting again. a better service for the raise of the taxes. Okay. All right. So, the budget. Okay. Mr. Billups. Deteriorating infrastructure and the cost thereof. Deteriorating infrastructure and the cost to replace it mm -hmm. or repair. Mr. Rogers. 
um, the cost of repairing the sewer system. Cost of repairing the sewer system, which is infrastructure also. Mr. Elmer? I think it's the upcoming budget, and I think the sewers are already in, uh, in right. works. Um, but it's the upcoming budget. Trying but to the keep budget, the total budgets that you're going to be looked at. Yes, because okay. otherwise we're going to see another tax increase, and I don't want to see that. All right. Mr. L? You asked what the most important thing was, and I have to agree with Mike. I think it's the budget itself, and most everything's included in there now. It's not included, but it's going to be considered in there. That sewer thing right now, I think we owe about $50 million on that yet, so we should right. budget for that over a couple of years. <clears throat> Any other comments? Yes. Um, yes. Mr. I don't Dio. think it's just one thing. I'm sorry. I agree just with... Just give me one that you think of. It's not just one. It's too complex. It's a matter of crime. It's a matter of dilapidation. Um, it's a matter of taxes, like Ms. John said. We can't increase taxes anymore. I fought against it back in February. Um, I'm the only one on this council here right now that fought against it, that sat here, you know, or stood up and talked against taxes. And that's because of my 90-year-old mother-in-law who owns her own home, who worked and slaved all her life to own that home. She earned it. She deserves it. And what we're doing every time we raise taxes is hurting the senior citizens. It's taking money away from their um, prescription budget, from their food budget, whatever you want to call it. We can't raise taxes. So your issue period. is do not raise taxes. Thank you. Mr. Goffman. <laughs> in, in order for the monetary system to work in this nation, it's governed by the feds, and they try to uh, make the inflation factor about 2% a year, because that makes the monetary system work great. So if you haven't raised taxes for five years, everything the city buys costs 10% more. So you have to raise taxes. I mean, that's just like dying. <laughs> Thank you. Who else? Uh, I'll just Ms. say growth and Drinker? growth and housing. Okay, growth and housing. There are currently, um, last time I checked, there are 16 housing developments in our community. Our community being Burlington, West Burlington, and the county. Um, and uh, we've got a lot of decisions to make how we're going to approach those. Okay. I would say stagnant or uh, negative population growth, which we've been facing since the 70s, I think is okay. a big thing we need Mr. to Okay, Mr. Oliver, thank you. Mr. Hollenbeck? Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with uh, the stagnating growth of Burlington and trying to, trying to bring more people to Burlington. That way, you know, we wouldn't necessarily have to raise taxes, but we'd have more revenue coming in with more people and more taxes they're paying. Okay, Mr. Fleetner? Um, money talks, so I would agree with the budget. And uh, also, I know that's the buzzword, uh, the Memorial Auditorium, what we're doing with that and the plans for that. Mm -hmm. All right. M Mr. Fleming, did you say something? <laughs> no, would you like me? <laughs> I, I, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of bashful. I, I know. <laughs> you just keep your own counsel and then. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no, the budget, obviously. I mean, that's what we're challenged with is how can we find ways to pay for all of the services we want to offer the public? It's a challenge every year. It's not going to be any different next than last. And hopefully we don't raise taxes. Sometimes we have to. All right. Thank you. Um, let's see. That's pretty much like that one. Uh, this one has to do with um, The issue of too much damaged property, too much, <clears throat> too, or too many things that are out there on property that shouldn't be. Uh, oh in other words, Nuisance clean up the oh, place. Nuisance. Yes. Nuisance. So, no, you don't get five minutes. For <laughs> Let me, I, I'm okay. going to jump in real quick okay. if you don't mind. Um, because this is a personal experience of mine. Um, I live in Saunderson Heights. Um, I purchased a home four years ago, which was part of the city's re-stabilization program, which meant kind of throwing in a brand new home in a dilapidated, falling apart, disgusting, 
community to be as respectful as I can be because I live next door to a salvage yard basically and then rental homes which is a, a huge issue someone on here mentioned yes. rentals that is a huge issue Wilson which I'm uh, oh, not okay. a fan of Wilson don't, but anyways no, 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 with that no. being <laughs> said I, I don't care that I said that um, don't mention any names I, I apologize but I'm still on record as saying it but anyways um, we need to get a grasp on this dilapidation, nuisance and dilapidation. I had to go all the way to a city councilman after months and months and months of going through staff to finally the city councilman to help me resolve a simple nuisance issue. Time up, but thank you, Mr. Deal. Okay, so the nuisance ordinance. Yes, Mr. Stivers. You know, um, like I said, I've owned a cab company for 20 years and I used to pick up a lot of people at the airport and one of the first things that they would notice about Burlington is when you're driving down Summer Street or West Avenue they'd always comment on how beautiful people's yards were and it was it was something that always stuck with me is because that was their first impression of Burlington and then when you do have somebody that has you know, six motor homes and 400 cars and trash in their backyards. It kind of takes away from that beauty. So what we should do is make people accountable for their homes, whether they're renting or whether they own, they should all be held accountable. And uh, we should, you know, enforce the rules. So our, any, Mr. Goffner? Yeah, I, most, uh, cities that I covered in my uh, in my uh, lifetime as a reporter and a newspaper publisher they let their ordinances go and I don't know how this community is but it might be wise to take a look at the ordinances some communities don't update them for 20 or 30 years I don't know how these are but I think that'd be one thing I'd want to look at right away and see if we can put some more teeth in them and get get uh, we wait too long to start on a problem I think but I'm not on the inside maybe they start earlier and I don't know it but okay thank you mr. L Diane I think the uh, issue has been addressed somewhat in that they've uh, strengthened the staff of the nuisance department but uh, and I think that the nuisance codes are okay it's just that there again it's just like the PD we're asking a handful of people to do an awful lot of work and so it's gonna, we're going to have to reach out to some other folks to help with this effort. Budget, uh, budget, budget. No, it, it is. That's okay. Where it ends up. That's Mr. Elmer. I, I agree with Bill. Um, I think it's, it's an enforcement issue, and it's a personnel issue of being able to, to do the enforcement. Um, I think what's in our books is probably adequate. It just it, we have to carry through in the enforcement of what we already have, which involves more people being more upfront about what they're doing. I, I'll give you an example. In my neighborhood, if you park a car there and they come and put a sticker on it, you can move that car two feet, <coughs> pull the sticker off, and you're good. They won't be back for a few more days. That's not really an enforcement of, of an ordinance. Um, you know, my neighborhood is, is riddled with these kind of things, and all my neighbors complain about it. It's just better enforcement of what we currently have. So thank you. I, uh, I don't feel that enforcement is necessarily uh, the most important aspect. It is an aspect of it, but I think that encouragement is a much more important aspect. Uh, getting people passionate about the community and getting them to want to keep their community clean. Like the paint a song. Yes, yes, exactly. Things like that. Yes, absolutely. Uh, getting people to want to keep their community clean, I think, is a far more effective route than just trying to hardline enforce ordinances. Because obviously, we have these ordinances, and they're not necessarily the most effective means. So, okay. Is there anyone who has about a 10-second response they want to add? Because I think generally the feeling is that we need to look at some of these Jenna. things. And Mr. Billups. Yeah, I, was, I, you know, I heard some talk about rental properties. So I'll try to make it quick. Yes. There's good landlords, there's bad landlords. There's good homeowners, bad homeowners. I think one of the things you could do on the, the rental properties, though, which would be effective, is require an inspection before they rent it each and every time. And so that would help the landlords, the good ones, are going to command the market anyway. The bad ones are going to say, well, you know what, maybe I'll change my game. And I'll vet, the, vet my tenant, and I'll fix up my property so I don't have to go through this hassle every time. 
that's not an enforcement necessarily per se, but it is. And, you know, you're enforcing the code that's already in the in the books. Right in the books. So. Okay. Anyone else? Because right about now, you're going to have a minute. Oh, you had something to say, Mr. Rinker. Um, yes, I was going to say better enforcement, which is pretty much echoing what most Basically. people have said. But I would also say that um, I've actually got an idea where we would uh, rebate and surcharge property owners, both non-owner occupied and owner occupied, based off of the condition of the property and their property taxes. So okay. people have an incentive to take care of it. And if they don't, then there's a disincentive that they maintain until they do take care of it. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Um, I want to thank everybody who, who did submit questions because we only got through about three or four of them. And um, now it's time for you each to have something to say, um, kind of as a final conclusion, uh, telling us a key thing or why we should vote for you. And so this time I'm going to begin at the end of the alphabet. It's only fair. Mr. Stivers? Yeah, I, I kind of expected it. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, i just like to first thank the rest of you on the panel up here that are going for city council. I think each one of you would make a great councilman. Um, it's going to take a lot of work for whoever gets up here and gets voted. Um, there's a lot of problems in Burlington. Um, I think one of the main reasons I got into this is the fact that uh, a lot of these issues that are coming up lately, I've actually lived. Like I said earlier, I had a shooting right outside my kitchen window. Um, I've had to experience living in some situations that are not good with rental properties. Um, I've actually had to, and I'm not proud to say this, but I've actually had to live in a uh, homeless shelter, which is not a very good experience. So I think a lot of the issues that are going around Burlington are some that I can deal with and can help being a city councilman, help others that are going through those situations deal with them. Time. And thank you. Mr. Rogers. First off, I'd like to thank everybody for being here and having this good debate. I think we've done a really good job, you know, communicating with each other and getting our ideas out there. Um, should you elect me, I do look forward to helping our residents, um, helping our working class residents, helping our middle class and our business owners, and working to create a 21st century infrastructure and helping to make a, a safer community. Um, I'm citizen-centered, I'm community-focused, and I would love to have Burlington's vote in October 10th. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rinker. Uh, thank you uh, very much for hosting this evening. Um, I think between this forum, the Chambers Forum, and the interviews that uh, Tanner and Rob have done, uh, the community has an opportunity to really understand each person's platform. And given the number of candidates sitting up here, I think that's essential. Um, I think I'd make a great candidate because the ideas that I'm bringing to the table are very well thought out. Um, it, it, taking into consideration points of view of, of a multitude of people, both in the public and the private sector. Um, and the ideas that I'm bringing, while I won't promise that they're solutions, only time will tell if they are or are not, um, uh, will be very detailed, uh, in depth, um, both on the implementation and the follow through. So that's why I think I'd make a great councilman. Thank you. Mr. Rinker. I mean, Mr. Oliver. It's okay. Sorry, right. we don't want to hear from you again, but we'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, again, like they've said, thank you for having me this evening. Thanks to everybody who uh, wrote, called in with questions or wrote questions from the audience. Uh, it's great to be up here with this many people because it's make it obvious that everybody's excited about trying to improve the community. Um, I think that. Uh, you should choose me because I am passionate about improving Burlington for the better. Uh, but I'm going to go into these situations level-headed, uh, take my time to do my research, and uh, try to implement well-thought-out policies. Uh, so the most important thing to me is get out and vote on October 10th. Whether it's for me or not, get out there and vote. So thank you. Thank you. Ms. Murray? First of all, I'd like to thank Diane members of the Women's Burlington Professional Group and members of our listening audience and our live audience. I'm excited to be up here as a candidate for Burlington City Council and I 
commend everyone that is up here sitting here with me. It's not easy to throw your name in the running. I understand some people actually wait for decades for their moment to run for a public office. And I'm excited. I waited for 10 years for my moment, so I'm excited to be up here. I have a quote on my phone that I'm particularly fond of. It says, you don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. And I'm ready to start. I'm ready to roll my sleeves up. I'm ready to go to work for you people of Burlington, Iowa. I hope you'll consider giving me the opportunity. Godspeed to the polls on October 10th. Thank you. Ms. John? I don't have much to say. I just think that I, I want to run for councilor and I decided to run for councilors because I think we need to change and I think that we need to listen to the people, decide what, what's best for Burlington, where our money's spent, where our time is spent, and where, what's the best for Burlington. And I'm all for Burlington. That's why I've lived here most, well, almost all my life. Thank you. Mr. Hollenbeck? I'd like to thank you for having me here and thank everybody for coming up here and running. Um, I believe people should vote for me because crime is a huge issue, and after researching a lot, uh, it comes down to programs we can put in the city and helping our youth and helping get people out of poverty. Uh, more policing doesn't always help. Um, that can actually cause more problems. So we really just need to get our youth out there, uh, get them being social, help our communities come together. Thank you. Mr. Goffner? Uh, I'd like to thank the um, business professional women. I'd like everyone to know that I think you uh, had all four of our children in your class when you were a teacher, and they, they turned out fine. I mean, I suffered. No. <laughs> they were uh, good kids. A week from tonight, uh, I have the Burlington uh, Public Library rented out, and we're going to have another forum like this, except the title of it is going to be You Talk and I Listen, and we have no watches allowed down there. So come on down and run your mouth as long as you want. The library closes at 8, and we start at 5.30. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Fleetner. I would like to thank everybody again who showed up and called in. Um, one reason to vote for me, I feel I'm very personable. I'm very networked in the community. I feel that, like I stated at the beginning, I'll listen with people and not just kind of close ear and talk at people. And I'm very excited to work with the council and also get our hands in and, and work with the community and kind of interweb a stronger basis for Burlington. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Fleming. Thank you to all for tonight and the people that are here. I've enjoyed it.